It is a great honor for the Perdana Global Peace Foundation, PGPF, to host this international conference on the New World Order, a recipe for war or for peace. To the men in the street, it could mean a new and a better way of life, perhaps better facilities and better standard of living, but it is not as straightforward as that. This term, the New World Order or NWO, which has been used by political leaders, is a generic term used to refer to a worldwide conspiracy that is being manipulated by extremely powerful and influential groups of individuals that include the wealthiest, major political leaders, corporate giants, and even some from a royal household. The aim is to create a world authoritarian government with no nationalistic or regional boundaries that disobey their, their agenda. This group has existed almost undetected by a complex web of deceit and a clever use of specially crafted and scripted agenda that sway public opinion. Such are the lengths of uh, such are the lengths they will go to achieve their ends. Now we are reminded that I quote, whatever happened in politics you can be sure that someone wanted it to happen and made it happen. That statement came from none other than the U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt. I'm most keen to listen to the panel of experts to better understand what is at stake. Today, we have the best brain to interpret the current situation in the world, a world filled with conflict, especially in the Middle East, in Eastern Europe, in Africa, Latin America, and even in Asia. Lastly, I would like to take this opportunity to also express my sincere thanks to many people who have come here today to listen and find out what the New World Order is all about. I hope that it can be a recipe for peace and certainly not for war. We often hear leaders talking about a new world order. And for most of us, when somebody speaks about a new world order, we visualize a better world, a world where we have, uh, we live much more prosperous life, free of oppression and the like. But actually, the idea of a new world order is not new. It is very old. Basically, it is about having a world government. We should abolish all states, all nations, all borders, but instead have only one world government. And that world government is to be by certain people, elites, people who are very rich, very intelligent, very powerful in many ways. They are the ones who will govern the world. There was not much talk about democracy or choice of leaders. Instead, there was to be a government by these elites who will impose their rules on everyone in this world. And for those who are unwilling to submit to them, there will be punishment. This is the concept initially, but many have not read or do not know about this concept. But it is important for us to remember that this new world order is an old world order. It's something that was conceived more than a hundred years ago. And yet it is being repeated by powerful 
politicians from powerful countries that it is new. We should be asking ourselves whether the people who originally conceived this idea has given up hope on achieving a world government. If we study carefully recent history, we will know that there are people who still wish to set up a world government where this government rules the whole, nation, the whole world without regard for nations or states. There would be no borders. And when I say no borders, I'm quite sure you remember the lots of talk about globalization and a borderless world. Globalization and a borderless world is an expression that relates to the concept of the new world order as it was first conceived. We live in a world today that is dominated by the powerful, the mighty, the people with the guns, except that, excepting that the guns now are much more sophisticated. We have reached a stage where certain people have arms which could wipe out the population of this world. The nuclear weapons have that capacity and the nuclear weapons are in the hands of certain countries and certain people. Therefore, the world is frightened of them and when the world is frightened of them, the world becomes submissive to them and when the world submits to them, effectively there is one government in this world. What we are seeing today happening in the Middle East, happening in many other countries, including in Malaysia, where interference is being made in the political process of this country, all these are in the interest of establishing the new world order. Now, would this bring peace to us? Or would it cause wars? to be fought in many places. We already see wars being fought in the Middle East, wars were fought in Vietnam and in many other parts of the world because of the need for the people who are promoting the new world order to establish their government of the world. And not only wars, we see all kinds of subversion taking place, undermining our moral values to the extent that we become helpless, unable to do anything. And the peace that we will get from this is the peace of the graveyard because the intention also is to reduce the number of people in this world. At the time when the new world order was enunciated, the population of this world was only 3 billion. The intention was to reduce it to 1 billion. Now the population of the world is 7 billion. There will be a need to kill many billions of people or to starve them to death or to prevent them from giving birth in order to reduce the population of this world. This is what is in store for most, for those who will suffer and die, there will be the peace of the grave. 